Let me show you how to remove a white background from my logo in Photoshop. This is the logo that we're going to work with. And although it's not a real client logo, it has a lot of the problems that you face with low quality client logos. For example, if I double click on the hand tool, you'll see that this image is very small. And when I zoom in, you will see the JPEG compression artifacts around the logo. We're going to remove them in this tutorial as well. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen and you'll see that the edges don't look sharp because again, this is a very small image and when you zoom in, you'll see the pixelization. But so that things are easier to see, I'll double click on the hand tool again to fit the image to screen. I used to work as a graphic designer for many years and we worked with a lot of small businesses and clients would always submit logos with white backgrounds like this. And if you're watching this video, then this is probably the problem that you're having now. What I'm gonna do is show you a fantastic technique that will give you excellent results. And if you enjoy this technique, make sure to click on that like button. It really helps out this channel when you do. Okay, let's jump right into the tutorial. Start by going into the channels panel. From here, we're going to use the RGB channels to create a selection. And the fact that we have a white background will make the selection easier to create because the white background is clearly defining the edges up against the logo. From here, look at each individual channel and see which one has most contrast between the white background and the logo. We'll start with the red channel. It looks pretty good, but we're missing the center orange piece. Then the green channel. It's okay, but the leaves are a bit bright, so that might be hard to select. And the blue channel, which looks fantastic, but the text is not very good. If you're lucky in your logo, you can do it with one channel. In this case, we're going to combine two channels to get a better result. The blue channel looks great, except for the text. And with the red channel, everything looks great except for the center piece. So we can combine these two channels together to make one selection. To do so, you can click and drag the blue channel into the new channel icon to create a duplicate copy of that channel. Then you can go into image, apply image. From here, make sure that you change the blending to multiply so that we can darken the image. And under channel, select the other channel. In this case, the red channel. Remember, we were going to combine the red and blue channel. We created a copy of the blue channel, and now we need to take the red channel and apply it to the copy. So under channel, select red, and you can see the result. You can click on this checkbox to see that before and the after. Notice that the logo is looking almost black, which is exactly what we want, and you can press OK. So now we can zoom in just to look at the details. And it's not perfect. Notice that the text is off black and there's still a lot of JPEG compression artifacts around the logo, but we can easily fix that by going into image adjustment levels. From here, we can click and drag this black point to the right to make the dark gray pixels black. You can see that here on the leaf, how now they're completely black. And we can drag the white point and drag it to the left to make these off white pixels completely white. That was the JPEG artifacts that you saw around the leaves and the rest of the logo. So everything is looking fantastic. You can press OK when you're done. And I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen, but we're not done yet. We want to select the logo. Currently, we're selecting the background because the background is in white. With a channel, white selects and black deselects. So we need to invert this. You can do so by pressing Control i on Windows, Command i on the Mac. That inverts the channel. Then you can hold the Control key on Windows or the Command key on the Mac and click on the blue channel thumbnail to load it as a selection. Then enable the RGB composite once again, go back into the layers panel, and you can create a new solid color fill layer, and I will make it black just so that I can have a black and white version of the logo just in case I need it. Next, I'll select the background layer, and I'll create a new solid color fill layer, and I'll make this one white so that we can have a new white background for the logo. If I double click on the zoom tool, you'll see the image at its actual size and it's looking fantastic. But you might be thinking, what about the color? Well, that's the next step. I always like a black and white version of the layer in case I need to use it for my design. And of course, I will need a color version as well. To create a color version, all you need to do is disable both layers. And from the background, we're going to take the colors. And with the eyedropper tool, I can select one of the colors found in the logo. Why don't we start with the branches? I'll click on that to select this dark gray. And now I can go and hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click on the layer mask to load that as a selection. 
At this point, I'll create a new color fill above the black color fill and select solid color once again. It will select the color that I selected and I can press OK. And what I'll do now is simply paint with black on my layer mask over things that shouldn't be this color. So I can click and drag and paint these away like so. And what I'm getting here is the colors of the original logo. If I enable the white background, this is what you should see. And just continue painting anything that shouldn't be gray. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. At this point, all you need to do is repeat this process with all the remaining colors in the logo. And this is what I came up with after completing that process. Notice that I labeled each layer. It's a good idea to always name and label your layers. If you right click on a layer, you can select the color. In this case, I selected green for the green leaves, the orange in the center, the tree and branches, and the text. And of course, I have my black and white logo as well, just in case I need it. Everything is transparent, as you can see, and it looks fantastic. Now, if you're wondering why I made these layers into solid colors as opposed to just a regular pixel layer, well, it's so that I can have the option to change colors on the fly. Sometimes clients change their mind and they want to make updates to their logo. So if they wanted to make the centerpiece green, I can easily double click on the foreground color picker, select the green, press OK, and I'm done. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you learned something, make sure that you click on that thumbs up button. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, make sure that you click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any future Photoshop tutorials. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.